Hey guys, today we're talking about three properties of night vision devices that you should be familiar with before you start using night vision. They are focus, diopter, and aperture. Those three properties of the device correspond to three parts of the device. The ring at the front controls focus, the ring at the back adjusts diopter, and the removable daylight cap adjusts the aperture. First up, focus. Focus is pretty self-explanatory. You can adjust the focus ring on the front of the device to go from anything very close to you all the way up to infinite. Infinite focus works just fine for anything between about 50 yards and the moon. The reason you need to adjust the focus so much on a night vision device is because they have an extremely limited depth of field. And the reason that they have such a limited depth of field is due to the aperture. Aperture is a property of camera lenses, but it also applies to the lenses on night vision devices as well. Most camera lenses have an adjustable aperture that can go from very wide open to let in the most amount of light possible, or very narrow to let in less light, but increase the depth of field. The aperture on a camera lens is measured with an F number, which tells you how wide open the aperture can be. A smaller F number means a wider aperture. So the 50 millimeter prime lens that I'm shooting this video with right now has a maximum aperture size of 1.8. By comparison, the maximum aperture size on a Psyonix Aurora camera is a 1.4, and the aperture size on a PVS-14 is 1.2. A lens with an aperture of 1.2 lets in a ton of light, but has an extremely narrow depth of field. You don't necessarily have to know the physics behind why a larger aperture results in a much narrower depth of field. I certainly don't, and I'm doing just fine, thank you very much. If you take pictures or shoot video with a wide open aperture, you get a very narrow depth of field and that nice blurry background that makes Grantham videos look so fucking cool. On a night vision device, it means that you have to be adjusting your focus a lot if you're going to be looking at something up close, like if you're doing administrative tasks in the dark or you're trying to look at rough terrain in front of you for navigation purposes. This is also where the lens cap or the daytime filter comes into play. The lens cap on a night vision device isn't actually solid. It has a very tiny pinhole in the center of it. That tiny pinhole reduces the light coming into the device, and that gives you two benefits. One, it protects the device from excessive light levels, which could damage the intensifier tube. And two, while that cap is on, it greatly increases your depth of field. The really limited depth of field on a night vision device is why you cannot shoot with iron sights. If you adjust your focus so that you can see your target, the sights are going to be so blurry that you probably won't even be able to tell they're there. However, if you've ever messed around with your night vision device in the house when the lights are on, you may have noticed that with the daytime filter on, you can actually use iron sights. The daytime filter significantly reduces the aperture size, gives you a much wider depth of field. If you're actually using the device in the dark, it'll probably reduce the incoming light to the point where the device is no longer all that effective. However, what you can do is punch a much larger hole in the lens cap, which will give you some of the benefit of the decreased aperture and some of the benefit of the reduced incoming light. I have two different lens caps for my PVS-14, one with a standard pinhole and one with a much larger hole. I keep the one with a larger hole on the device, even when I'm storing it, transporting it, or using it. I'm just careful to make sure the device is off when I'm moving it around or when I'm entering a highlight area. Here's a cool demo, by the way. The camera is currently not focused perfectly on that little uh, SB Tactical instruction sheet that I happen to have laying around. But if I hold up my PVS-14 daylight filter, you can see that now our depth of field has gotten much wider and the text is now within the depth of field. I haven't adjusted the focus at all. I've just increased the depth of field to the point where the text is visible. If I do the same thing with the larger hole cap, you can see it helps, but not as much. And lastly, we'll talk about diopter. So the ring on the back of the device is what controls diopter. The diopter is how you adjust the device to your specific human eyeball and also how you accommodate for the distance between your eye and the device. Different people have different eyeballs and will have to adjust the diopter differently for the device to fit them. But even if you have the diopter set perfectly for your eye when the device is extremely close to your eye, if you move it slightly farther away, you may have to adjust the diopter again. The trick to using a monocular night vision device especially is to make sure that you collimate the two images that your eyes see. You adjust the diopter to make sure that what you're seeing with your unaided eye matches up to what you're seeing with the eye that has the night vision device over it. If you don't have your diopter adjusted right, using your night vision device is going to be disorienting, might give you headaches, and it's just not going to look right. The trick that's always worked well for us to adjust diopter is to look at something like a tree line so you can see the contrast between the trees and the sky beyond. 
In almost all situations, there will be enough light that even your unaided eye can see the contrast between the tree and the sky. That'll allow you to adjust the diopter until the images kind of come together and you're able to see. Once you have the diopter set, you're pretty much good for the night because you're probably not going to be moving the device around on your helmet. The only thing you need to mess with at that point is the focus and perhaps the lens cap to control aperture. The perimeter of the diopter adjustment ring has numbers that correspond to the level of diopter adjustment and the base of the lens assembly on the back has a little white dot that indicates what your current diopter setting is. If you happen to already know what your diopter is because your eye doctor told you, you can probably pretty quickly get the diopter set right on your device without even having to look through it. If not, it may be useful for you to remember what your diopter number seems to be when you set the device and then quickly check to make sure it's on the right spot every time you pick it up to use it. I am not able to do that, however, because the diopter indicator ring has come unglued or detached from the plastic housing that it's supposed to be solidly attached to. But at this point, I'm pretty good at changing my diopter and getting everything dialed in pretty quickly. Part of that is because I adjust the diopter all the time. So if I'm going to be taking pictures or recording video through my PVS-14, I crank the diopter all the way in, and then when I want to go use it again, I have to crank it a lot of the way out because I have terrible, terrible eyesight. I don't know if any of that made sense or was even of any value to you, but maybe it was. If you have any questions, let me know. See you later.